Welcome again. We're here with uh, Mr. Enrique Manrique, the Director of Outpatient Services for SCAN, and we're going to ask him a few questions about uh, youth who may or may not have substance uh, use problems. Uh, Mr. Manrique, but let's say that I am a parent and uh, I'm concerned that my son is uh, using substances, alcohol or drugs. Uh, what should I do? Well, if the adolescent is using drugs or alcohol, the first thing you want to do is ensure that you have a strong relationship with the teenager. Uh, you want to avoid conflict and argument to avoid it, to avoid escalation. This is really important. Uh, sometimes this is difficult as parents are concerned and sometimes afraid. Uh, the next step is to reach out for help and you can do this by calling us and scheduling an appointment. Uh, it's really, uh, with that appointment, uh, it'll help us identify the needs of the individual. Okay. So then, um, I know that parents are usually, you know, alarmed, you know, and scared like you said. Um, so then, what are the, uh, usually the, what you have seen in treatment, uh, what are the different, I guess, possibilities that can happen with, yeah. with adolescents? Oh, definitely. So, uh, once we, you call us for an appointment and we identify the needs, uh, sometimes the individual may need education, at other times it's just learning new skills, and sometimes formal treatment. If they need formal treatment, then that would mean something like outpatient, mm -hmm. And if the problem is more severe, then residential treatment would be another option. Okay. So when uh, adolescents, um, do you say that they only need education? Is it because they don't have, or some of them may not have a, a yeah. substance use disorder? You know, sometimes uh, adolescents use drugs, but they don't develop a problem all the time. And some do. And that's when, uh, that's when we do the assessment. It, it helps us identify the needs of the individual. So then for parents that are watching this, it is important to know that just because they found out that their son is using alcohol or drugs, that they doesn't necessarily mean that they're addicted. Um, but it's important to find out and to get an idea, you know, how serious their substance use is. Yes, definitely. By giving us a call, setting up that appointment, and allowing us to do that, that assessment, it could help us give them a better picture of what's going on. And again, it, it might not be a problem, but if it is, then... Uh, we can give them options as far as what can happen. Mm -hmm. So then again, it may, may seem that I'm repeating myself. So then some of them, you know, may be using substances because I guess many adolescents uh, tend to experiment with drugs. So these may not have any uh, substance use uh, disorders. But others, uh, they, they, maybe they're already getting uh, addicted or they're already developing problems with drugs and alcohol. And you're saying that there are many different types of services for these uh, kids that already have uh, a, a problem with drugs and alcohol. Definitely, yes. And then, so what? Uh, what are kind of the, some of the services that SCAM provides so, for uh, treatment? For treatment, uh, there's uh, two different options in treatment that SCAM provides, and the first one is outpatient counseling, where the individual stays at home and comes for the appointments. And if the problem is more severe, then definitely residential treatment would be the next option. And uh, either outpatient or residential. Uh, are parents involved in treatment? Yes, uh, in all treatment for adolescents or adults, we always want the family involved in treatment mm -hmm. from the very beginning to the very end. It's very important that the family be included. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm, I'm guessing that since these kids are still with their parents, that even for adolescents, it may be even more important that the parents be participate in treatment. Yes, definitely. Okay, so then. Um, and part of services, and let's say not patient services, what are, what, what are the services that parents can receive? Well, definitely one of the things that we do have in outpatient counseling is what we call family groups. And this is where we get the families involved in treatment. Not only does the uh, adolescent come to counseling or group counseling, but we also have a separate group for family members to partake. Mm -hmm. uh, here they learn about uh, how problems affect family, how some people react to it, and ways that they can help. Okay. And um, so then you said family groups. Um, 
So then, you, do you also do family sessions with the adolescents and yes, parents? Yes. Uh, so uh, uh, again, so aside from the family groups, we do have uh, individual sessions with the with the with the adolescent, where we also bring in the family, uh, the family unit to you know mm -hmm. address different uh, issues that arise. And I know uh, residential treatment is not, you know, part of your the services that you oversee. Um, but I'm imagining that parents also uh, who have kids in residential treatment they can also participate. I'm imagining. Yes, no, it's it's very similar as as what we do. Uh, the families again are highly encouraged to participate in treatment. So, uh, for residential settings, the families do come to weekend visits with their with their child but also, also take part in group sessions mm -hmm. uh, specifically designed for the family. Well, thank you so much. And I think it is important for parents to watch this. What uh, Mr. Manrique said about, about avoiding conflict and avoiding things that escalate the problem. And the first thing that you guys have to do is to call and really get an idea of what is maybe happening with the adolescent and get them to the right services. Thank you.